welcome everyone so we finished all the concepts of strategies for enhancement of food production and we thought in this lecture we'll cover the ncert exercise questions and ncert exemplar from this chapter right so this is also important some concepts which are missed in the content will be we can discuss here through the exemplar questionnaire right so this is also important children not just reading the chapter after reading the chapter you need to check the ncert exercise questions also you need to check the ncert exemplar mcqs also also one markers two markers also means very short answers and short answers also you need to complete then only you have completed a chapter right so let's start these are the ncert exercise questions which are there in your second year ncert textbook after the chapter is completed now let us see what is the first question they have given us explain in brief the role of animal husbandry in human welfare so they are asking us what is the role of animal husbandry in human welfare right animal husbandry means rearing of animals right taking care of animals breeding domestic animals right and uh, cultivating them in a better sign scientific manner is called as animal husbandry come on tell me what is animal husbandry it is a practice of taking care and breeding of domestic animals in a scientific manner right and they are asking what are the benefits that animals are giving to the human welfare by rearing the domestic animals what are the benefits we are getting they are asking come on tell me from cattle we'll get milk so milk is a good source of protein milk is a good source of protein milk is a good source of minerals like calcium magnesium iron and all and we can tell that for the newborn baby infant milk is a whole food means for a span of 6 months or 7 months they'll be fed on milk only so milk is very important in man's diet then afterwards we can talk about egg from poultry farming we get egg also contains very good amount of protein right and then we can talk about meat meat of the cattle and meat of the poultry farming we can take so meat why do we take meat it is also good source of protein so from animal husbandry by rearing domestic animals we are getting milk and milk products we are getting egg we are getting meat and from honey bees we are getting honey honey has lot many uses honey acts as a sweetener also honey used in treatment in ayurveda medicines and all honey is used and bee wax we take it and we use it in cosmetic preparation and all bee venom is used in treatment of rheumatoid arthritis so that is also having so many uses then we can tell fish is if we tell fish from uh, fisheries fish and other things like prawn crab all those things they will give meat and then we can tell like uh, cultivation uh, the waste products and all can be used from fish whatever the waste we are getting can be used as a manure can be used as a fertilizer right and the animals the main animals in cattle we call them as drought animals drought animals can be used in agricultural farms for bullock carting and all for pulling that and all we can use them right and what are the other products we can get when we are cultivating the animals horns feathers bone cow dung animal skin they are having so many in number of applications right so from the bones they prepare some powder from that they extract gelatin cow dung can be used in gobar gas cow dung can be dried and used as bio fertilizer so many products are there so yeah we can tell that yeah like uh, man derives enormous benefits from animal husbandry and animal breeding so many examples i gave you we can list down one by one milk meat egg honey skin of the animals drought animal in agricultural farming then bones are used horns are used feather is used cow dung is used so many enormous benefits we are getting right let's go to the second question now if your family owned a dairy farm if we are having a dairy farm dairy farm means um, from where we get milk and milk products what measures would you undertake to improve the quality and the quantity of the milk production in order to increase the quality of the milk in order to increase the quantity of the milk what are the measures you take the first and foremost thing is which breed are you selecting depending on the breed only quality and quantity will depend if i own a dairy farm so my first point will be which breed i am selecting the breed should be disease resistant the breed should be of high yielding correct 
and after that when we are keeping it in a shed we need to see that whether it is properly ventilated or not and properly providing water for it properly cleaning the animal and the drainage supply for the shed should be there this also we should take care and feeding of that cattle should be in a scientific manner this much amount of protein this much amount of fiber all that feeding of the cattle should be in a scientific manner and cleanliness and hygiene for the cattle also we have to take care and the handler who is handling it also should be taken care and then we can tell we have to take the animal regularly to the veterinary doctor and we should maintain a record of its vaccination and its health checkups and all those things when we maintain all these things obviously the quality and quantity from a dairy farm will be good only right so what points i told here if we are having a dairy farm what are the measures you will take to improve the quality and quantity means the first and foremost point is we will select the breed which is having high yield and which is disease resistant then we are telling we have to maintain the shed in a proper manner we have to provide aeration we have to give drainage supply and all then water supply we have to give then feeding it in a scientific manner and visit, taking it to a veterinary doctor then properly vaccinating it and maintaining the record right all these things are important let's talk about the third question now what is meant by the term breed what is meant by a term breed a group of animals which came from the common ancestor since they are descendants of the common ancestor these many group of animals for example all are black pens and all of them are luxor pens only right so that means this is one breed like that you can take means a group of animals which are having same which are having same configuration same size same behavior same habitat and all because why they descend from the common ancestor is called as a breed right so we understood what's the definition of a breed what are the objectives in animal breeding what are the objectives in animal breeding means when we are doing animal breeding we need to select two parents one parent which is high yield another parent which is disease resistant that's the first point right and then we need to check how much yield it is giving and then we need to see what manner it is feeding and if it is drought animals are also need to be rare need to be breeded because in agricultural purposes and all if the farmer is not uh, he cannot afford buying machines and all with the bullocks only he'll handle uh, sowing the seeds and all cutting and all all those things right so drought animals should be rare high yielding variety should be rare disease resistant variety should be rare amma now let's go to fourth question name the methods employed in animal breeding we studied animal breeding is of two types natural breeding and artificial breeding natural breeding means uh it's a natural process artificial breeding where we are involved where we take a particular uh, Uh, bull and we allow it to mate it with the female during the estrus period so we have two types of breedings one is natural breeding other one is artificial breeding now coming to artificial breeding coming sorry coming to natural breeding we tell in breeding and out breeding in natural breeding we again divide them into in breeding and out breeding what is in breeding breeding among the same breed who are having the same ancestors for the past 4 to 6 generations is called as in breeding Where as when we are doing the breed between uh, two animals of the same breed but they don't have common ancestors then what is it called out breeding so when we do uh, between the two breeds between two different breeds it is called out crossing and when we do between two different species it is called interspecific hybridization all this comes under natural breeding when it comes to artificial breeding artificial insemination bull will be somewhere else in some other place in some other country also it can and we from there will borrow the semen and we will froze the semen and we will bring it and then we will inject it into the female right so that comes under artificial breeding in natural breeding male and female are allowed to breed male and female are allowed to mate whereas in artificial breeding we do it with artificial insemination semen is collected from the male from a different place we need not bring it to the place uh, to the shed where female is there we will directly inject the semen inside and in order to increase the chances we go with moet multiple ovulation embryo transfer right we will inject the female with fsh like hormone so that instead of producing one egg it will produce many eggs so that many zygotes will be formed so they are asking us 
according to you what is the best method which is the best method in breeding is the best method or uh, natural breeding is the best method or artificial breeding is the best method tell me in artificial breeding we are selecting an elite bull which is having far many superior characters and that we are mating with this female so the progeny will be very good so i will tell artificial breeding is better than the natural breeding why natural breeding sometimes the male and female uh, if they are not compatible they will not mate in artificial breeding that can be overcome now next one uh, like only little amount of semen we can inject in artificial breeding means if you bring one cryopreservized semen that you can inject to as many females as possible means it becomes economical right and superior characters also can be introduced so according to me artificial breeding is far far better than natural breeding next question number what is apiculture rearing of honeybees is called as apiculture rearing of honeybees is called as apiculture how is it important in our lives uh, if it is important then only we will culture it what are the products we get from honey bee tell me we get honey honey is a natural sweetener honey is used in medicines we discussed bee wax is used in cosmetics bee venom which we obtain it it is used in treatment of arthritis right bees also pollinate the agricultural land and the agricultural crops and they increase the yield so all that we can tell apiculture means rearing honey bees how is it important in our Our lives means we extract so many things from honey bees. Main is the honey bee extract. It is used in medicines. It is used as a sweetener. And then we are telling bee wax is having so many applications. And then we are telling bee venom is also having applications. And if you uh, have a bee culture farm in your agricultural land, then that bees will come and pollinate the flowers. So then fruit and seed will be formed. Then the yield will be increased. Right. A sixth question, children. Discuss the role of fisheries in food production. Discuss the role of fisheries in food production. Now, what is the role of fisheries in food production? We told when the population is increasing enormously to meet the demand. So we have to. to meet the demand we started animal breeding then we talked about green revolution we talked about white revolution now fisheries is blue revolution right so in the same lines of green revolution and white revolution so when we started culturing more fishes then that is called as blue revolution now in blue revolution so what is the main thing we are culturing is fishes only now when we culture why do we culture fish because it's a source of food only food we take we take only fish meat or fish uh, has a rich source of protein and fish liver is a rich source of vitamin a and vitamin d right and then how many types of fisheries are there how did you improve the fish production then only it has enhanced the food production we can tell different types of fisheries are there right what are they one is called as capture fisheries means uh, uh, rivers all those things means from there we go and catch it that's called capture fisheries and if you are making a fish pond then that is called as culture fisheries growing uh, fishes in fresh water is called inland fisheries growing water in marine water bodies is called marine fisheries so different types of fish cultivations we started so that we reach that blue revolution level so that we can we have enhanced the uh food production through fishes amma discuss the role of fisheries in food production did you understand we are talking about what is that revolution called blue revolution we are talking about blue revolution which enhanced the fish production it has enhanced the fish production next question briefly describe various steps involved in plant breeding this is important five marker question for your boards what are the five steps of plant breeding first one is collection of variability we have to collect all the wild varieties cultivable varieties in that area that's called collection of variability so after collecting these many plants so second step will be selection among this we have to select for the superior parents we have to evaluate the characters of all these things and we have to pick two which are superior which are having good qualities one as male other one as female so selection of parents will be the second step and the third step will be cross hybridization between them that's the third step and the fourth step is after doing hybridization so when we get the hybrids we need to check for the hybrid Hybrids in which superior recombinant characters are there. So selection of the recombinants is the fourth step, and then we need to test it. We need to test it in the 
uh, lab then in the farm then we need to commercialize it so these are the five steps of plant breeding what is that collection of variability second one selection of the parents third one cross breeding among the selected parents and fourth one selection and picking the superior recombinants and what is the last one last one is testing release and commercialization of the varieties these are the five steps clearly they have mentioned in ncrt children go through all the five points once as i told this is an important five marker question now our next question is question number eight explain what is meant by biofortification biofortification means enhancing the nutritional values of the food enhancing the nutritional value of the food is called as biofortification now why we need to enhance means we were telling that more than 25 percent of the population in the world are suffering with hunger and malnutrition and they're not able to effort to buy the foods which are rich in nutrients like fruits vegetables pulses and all those things they can either buy flour and make roti they can either buy rice and make uh, rice and they can eat it so they cannot effort for buying fruits and vegetables which are very much expensive so that is why why can't we incorporate those things in rice and wheat or why can't we enhance the nutritional value three times five times so that when the person is buying this much in that only he will get his recommended diet relevance is that is called biofortification what is biofortification enhancing the nutritional value in the food so that we can can uh, provide better nutrients even for the poverty line people also right children explain what is meant by biofortification indian agricultural research institute has prepared biofortified rice iron fortified rice it has prepared and calcium and iron fortified beans it has prepared right so vitamin c enriched uh, bitter garden all it has prepared right let's go to the next question which part of the plant is best suited for making virus free plants and why so if this is the plant the tip of the plant contains apical meristem at the axis of the leaf there's one more meristem which is called axillary meristem apical meristem and axillary meristems are the best cells to start tissue culture or micro propagation experiments why even if the whole plant is infected with virus so these meristematic cells they are not infected with virus why meristematic cells means the name meristem itself is called actively division so they multiplied such a fast rate that even virus cannot enter inside so from a vi from a completely virus infected plant also if you're picking the meristematic cells they'll be virus free and that cells you can take and you can recover the genes back so they're asking us which cells we need to take means the answer is epical meristematic cells or axillary meristematic cells why because the meristematic cells are actually dividing cells the rate of multiplication is far higher than the viral multiplication next question children what are the major advantages of producing plants through micro propagation micro propagation is a type of tissue culture technique where we produce plants in a short span rapid multiplication we do that's why it's called micro propagation the plants which are produced are small so that's why in a short span in a short area we can propagate it and so many are produced and all of them are sisters to each other they're genetically similar we call them as soma clones and what are the other advantages of micro propagation means rare and endangered species can be cultivated they can be maintained and even even if the genes are sterile also so we can cultivate them by micro propagation is vegetative propagation so we don't need for their gametes and all so through vegetative cells also we can propagate it seedless varieties are also propagated by micro propagation it is a rapid multiplication technique endangered species can also be multiplied and they can be maintained and then we were talking about sterility genes are also ster plants which are sterile also can be maintained because you're doing somatic hybridization and all the plants which are produced through micro propagation are similar to themselves they're similar to the parent also they are clones that's it children we discussed uh, we discussed 10 questions here two more questions are there the 11th question is find out various components used in the medium for propagation of explant what is explant when we are doing tissue culture experiment 
when we are doing tissue culture experiment in that we need to drop a part of a plant that part of the plant which are plucking from the stem and dropping it in the tissue culture medium is called as explant they are asking if you are dropping an explant in a medium how did you prepare the medium what are the components of the medium they are asking us the popular medium is ms medium right murashige scoob medium so what are the components we add we add inorganic salts as a carbon source we add sucrose then uh, hormones right we add plant hormones what are the plant hormones auxins and cytokines we add which type of auxin 24d which type of cytokinin benzamino purin bap we add and we add vitamins like thymine inositol niacin all these vitamins also we add we check the ph the ph of the medium should be 5.7 amino acids like glycine and arginine and added. these are the components the first component i told what's the first component inorganic salts minerals we need to provide carbon source sucrose you need to provide amino acids like glycine and arginine we need to provide vitamins like thymine inositol niacin are provided hormones like auxins and cytokines are provided so these are the components maintain the ph 5.7 and then maintain sterilized conditions it will grow that's called tissue culture next question last question name any five hybrid varieties of of crop plants developed in india so many varieties are there they're just asking us five so many we can write now the varieties of rice what we developed in india are called jaya and ratna right so there are semi dwarf varieties what is a variety of uh, brassica we developed pusa gaurav what is a variety of chilli we developed pusa sadabahar what is a variety of wheat we developed himigiri variety what is a variety of cowpea we developed uh, the variety of cowpea is called pusa komal Pusa Komal, so five varieties they asked. We have given five varieties. Rice semi dwarf varieties at all, Jaya and Ratna. Chilli variety at all, Pusa Sadabahar. Wheat variety at all, Himigiri. Mustard variety is called Pusa Gaurav. Cowpea variety is called Pusa Komal. Look into the tables, you'll get even more examples. All right? We covered all the 12 NCRT exercise questions. Are you enjoying the lectures? So post me in the comment box. Now coming to the NCRT exemplar questions. Now we I wrote some six questions here. The remaining questions will cover in the next lecture. First question: The chances of contracting bird flu from properly cooked meat is. So unknowingly we bought a uh, bird. which has been affected with bird flu but then the indian style of cooking is we properly cook it right we fry it nicely after properly cooking it how much percent of chances are there for the spread of this uh, bird flu virus from this meat to the man who is eating it so in a properly cooked manner if you are eating raw or flesh or partially cooked it might transmit but in properly cooked i'll tell the chances are zero none so you can tell the chances are zero children the next question a group of animals which are related by descendants they are coming from the common descendants they share many similarities like form size configuration what are they called breed what's the answer here check in the options for breed right so i i uh, made it into fill in the blank because it will take space so that's why i wrote the fill in the blank next question in breeding is carried out in animal husbandry why why do we do in breeding why do we do in breeding so So, if you are comfortable with my way of teaching, always you will be checking for my lectures only, right? So, in the same manner, when we do continuous inbreeding, 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 the same genes are being maintained. Means homozygosity is maintained. Why do we do inbreeding? If you want a pure line, if you want to maintain homozygosity, check the answer. Vigara, no. Improving the breeder, no. increasing heterozygosity na increasing homozygosity na i told when we constantly do inbreeding homozygosity will be increased so this is the answer sonalika and kalyan sona are varieties of jayan ratna are semi dwarf varieties of rice kalyan sona and sonalika are semi dwarf varieties of wheat Next question: Which of the following is not a fungal disease? Which is not a fungal disease? Okay, so rust is rust of wheat, fungal disease. I'll tell. Smut, 
fungal disease i'll tell black rot of crucifers check carefully black rot of crucifers is caused by a bacteria called xanthomonas so black rot of crucifers is the answer since it's a bacterial disease caused by a bacteria called xanthomonas right children whereas rust in wheat is caused by pecunia smut is caused by eustelago fungus only red rot is caused by colletotrichum come on tell with me rust is caused by pecunia smut is caused by eustelago red rot is caused by colletotrichum these three are fungus whereas xanthomonas is bacteria next question in which uh, in virus infected plant meristems are free of viruses because of the complete plant is infected with virus but the meristematic cells are free of virus why because the meristem cells multiply rapidly than the viral multiplication what's the answer because the meristem cells the meristem cells multiply multiply at far higher rate the meristematic cells multiply at far higher rate than the viral multiplication so they'll not give the scope for the virus to enter so that's why the meristematic cells always remain virus free only so children we covered 12 exercise questions and we covered six mcqs questions from example in the next lecture we'll try to complete the remaining questions from this chapter if you like the content like share subscribe to my channel thank you